Hey guys, how are you? Today I'm going to talk about another sector that uh, got hurt in a colossal way, and that is the retail sector. Uh, now, anything that I say cannot be perceived as uh, an advisory or something like that for an investment. Uh, everybody should do their own calculations. This is just an opinion, a personal approach, a think tank approach. You guys uh, would love to hear your opinions. So let's get into it. First of all, the retail sector was already in trouble. Why Amazon and all the, you know, the online shopping, you know, uh, uh, trend and everything that led to it uh, caused the retail to be to be hurt for the past in the past few years. I've spoken about it in the past. Everybody spoke about it in the past. Uh, the retail became a real challenge. And finally, 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 um, recently in the last year, year and a half, uh, retailers, meaning real estate uh, uh, landlords, who owns shopping centers, uh, strip malls, malls, etc., etc., uh, started uh, to get into this uh, idea that the online caught really caught fire and it's really an amazing thing. And they started rethinking about their business model when they came to, to uh, uh, the tenant mix that they have in a shopping center or in the mall. And in the past, they had those anchors in all directions, uh, like Sears, like JC Penney's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all those little small uh, retailers, they were in the middle, and that's how the mall was designed, and usually in an out-of-town place. And then recently, before the coronavirus uh, hit, everybody moved into urban into the urban areas and started going for mixed-use development or mixed-use existences and started to put a lot more effort into strip malls also or shopping centers and uh, in inside neighborhoods next to urban areas or next to neighborhoods that it will be much much easier to approach it less clothing less things that can be bought online a lot more restaurants a lot more coffee shops a lot more starbucks etc etc and those type of shops started uh, started to be the anchor of those malls and the tenant mix became such a an important business model for many many retail many uh, landlords who are dealing with retail, and that how that's how it was. Finally, they found the cocktail of what they wanted to do. Each one had their own cocktail. If it was more value add, if it was less value add, more uh, income producing type of an approach, development to buy, you know, in order to get in with. Uh, all kind of relationships that they had with retailers, whatever it was, came the coronavirus and took everything, bam, down. Just like the hotel sector, the hospitality sector, like I spoke about the last video, um, the retail sector got really smashed. And if there's a sector where everything went from X amount of traffic, X amount of activity, X amount of ability, X amount of profits, revenues coming in, to zero, literally zero in one day, that's the sector retail. Whether it's moms and pops that got hurt majorly and may not be able to re, meaning we may not see those shops reopening, unfortunately. It's really an unfortunate thing. Or if those are larger chains, we may see X amount of stores not being able to reopen due to the fact that they had to take a hit and close some stores. Whatever it was, from what I hear from anyone who owns retail, some of the people are telling me, not everybody, but some of the people are telling me that the retail got hurt so bad that I would say up to 70-80% are not paying rent. That is an unprecedented uh, amount. 70% of, of the rent from retail is not coming in because people cannot pay rent. And they're trying to juggle with the lenders, trying to juggle with their tenants because they don't want to lose their tenants. They want to be able to be back to the tenants. Saying all that, what is our approach when it comes to investment? For any existent uh, malls, shopping centers, etc., due to the fact that coronavirus will pass, will be over. It will take time. I say it every time I say it all over again. I'm not a prophet. I don't know when it will be over three months, four months, half a year, two years, I do not know. 
But one thing we do believe, we do believe, again, without being prophets, without knowing everything in the world, that within a year and a half to two years it will be over. It's a long time. It is depressing. It is a long time. But it will be over eventually. So those with, again, deep pockets, those families, the family offices, those with deep pockets, who, knows re- who know how to run retail, who know how to, who have the relationships to know how to get the right talent picks, etc. Those with deep pockets, with the ability to take low leverage and to buy, they are sitting on the lines with the cash. You will have your opportunity, I believe. Those opportunity will come. It may be sooner than later, it may be later than so I don't know, but it will come, I believe, because those who are holding them and are not being able to keep up with their debt service and not being up to, to keep uh, holding them, holding those centers, and they are leveraged pretty high, and they need to you know, cut loose some of them in order to keep their business running. Those who have deep pockets, those who have the ability to buy and sit and stay with it, it's not a great investment for now. It's not an income producing uh, game. It's a futuristic game for people with deep pockets only. Only those who are investors who are looking for some value add game in order to pick them up right away and to have their cap rate going from here to there, etc. And then have an exit cap rate. All these regular normal games in normal times do not exist now. It doesn't exist. It's a no no. Don't go there. I would not be there, I would not go there unless there's deep pockets and a lot of patient capital to go and to hold it, hold tight, because you're not going to lose much due to the fact that you have a lot and you'll be able to go through this hump and once the market gets back, you have this property that you bought low and you'll be able to fill it up, get the new retailers, do the right tenant mix and then either keep it, hold it, sell, whatever your, 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 your strategy is. But the idea is, the idea is the, those with deep pockets is the game for them. Those who have ability to get low leverage, those who are um, not with patient capital, those who take high leverage and have this game, and they have certain amount, and they need LPs, and they need, and they need the banks to come along, and they need to refine the middle. All these games, it's it's in my opinion, it's a don't go there. It's, uh, it's a dangerous game right now. The retailers are being hurt. We do not know how many of them will recover. It's an unknown game. It's a very dangerous game. And my love to all those guys, whether landlords or retailers, who are struggling and uh, want to get out of this and when they want to get out of this with the ability to support their families, to support their businesses, to be able to have the workers coming back. So our economy, because this is the... This is the backbone of our economy. These type of businesses are the backbone of our economy, whether it's in, in the U.S. or anywhere in the world. So especially the U.S., U.S. is like the, the locomotive of, uh, of the economy all over the world. When, and I spoke about it in the video about the, uh, the Great Depression. When the U.S. collapsed, the entire world collapsed. So I really hope to see in every country, and especially in the U.S., I, to see those retailers coming back, being able to support their families, uh, again, all over the world, being able to support their families, coming back, hold their businesses, get their workers back, their employees back, pay them, uh, get those restaurants back so we can go and enjoy those that food that we love so much. And, um, and uh, I wish well to everybody. Again, in terms of an investment, everybody in the world, I would say, it's a bad time to get into that kind of stuff. Now... If it's a development, I always talk about it. If it's a ground-up development, you can still look at it. Why? Because if it's a ground-up development that will be ready within two years, it's a location makes sense. You have the, the again, you have the ability to do the retail game to get the right tenant mix, etc. If it's in two years, eighteen months, this is something that can be looked at carefully and with a lot of thought process. But you have to be careful. You don't know what will, who will come out in the end, in the other end of the tunnel. You guys stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Peace and love to you.